Hello everyone and welcome back to Jackal Educational Channel. So this is the part 22 for the unit wise complete syllabus preparation for the UGC NET environmental science paper. Yes, those who haven't watched the previous 21 part, you can check the link given in the i button as well as in the description below. So this video is going to be very very helpful for you. So get ready with your notes so that you can write down every important points which I am going to discuss in this video. So without much delay, let's get started. So in the last video in this series, we were discussing from the meteorological parameters from the unit one that is fundamentals of environmental sciences and we were discussing on the pressure topic. So we had discussed many things about pressure. Those who haven't watched, you can watch the video. And now today also we are going to continue this topic from the pressure portion. So here in atmospheric pressure, everything which we are going to learn will be from the importance of the UGC net environmental science paper. So this is the page where I have mentioned a very important formula to find the pressure at height h. So this is important to note down. So find a pressure at any height. The formula is pH is equal to P naught e to the power minus mgh divided by kt. So here P naught is the sea level pressure. So these things, small things you should mention everything. And now I will tell you what are these values, these constants. First of all, what is capital Na is the Avogadro's number. We all know 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. So here this formula is also very, very important. So the k, small k is the Boltzmann's constant where you should be knowing what is the value of the Boltzmann constant. So it is nothing but it is the R that is the gas constant divided by the Avogadro's number. So if you don't know the Boltzmann constant also, but you know the gas constant and the Avogadro's number, you all should be knowing, yes, this is the R constant value, that is the gas constant and Avogadro's number. So by simply dividing it, you will be able to get the K value, that is the Boltzmann's constant, which will be used in this formula to find the pressure at any height h. So this is the formula and small m is the mass of one molecule and this formula you should note down because this is very very important as per the meteorological parameter pressure portion is concerned. So everything we will be discussing about the UGC net paper keeping in mind how to get more marks. Next is coming to the formula. So formula again uh, from the pressure that is percentage of relative humidity. So these questions are asked very often, very frequently asked question and the formula to find the percentage relative humidity is actual vapor pressure multiplied by 100 divided by the saturation vapor pressure. So all these things are related to pressure that's why I'm noting it here in this video in the continuation of the syllabus wise preparation. So now we will know how to incorporate the formula when the question is asked in the exam. So here in net 2020 paper, this question was directly from this concept. Yes, the question was a sample of air has relative humidity of 60 percentage. Given that the saturated vapor pressure of the water is 2260 Pascal. So the question was asking calculate the vapor pressure of the air at 20 degrees Celsius. So what we'll do simply we will put the values and we'll get the answer. So what is the formula formula is percentage of relative humidity here it is already given what it is given it is given as 60 percentage that means we have to write as 60 by 100 because it is given in percentage is equal to what is equal to actual vapor pressure so here actual vapor pressure we have to find out that is asking in the question divided by the saturation vapor pressure which is in the formula and it is given as 2260 pascal and here we will get actual vapor pressure is equal to 2260 multiplied by 3 by 5. So don't ask where from 3 by 5 has come. Very simple because it is 23s are 60s and 25s are 100. I think this is very clear, very simple thing. So after solving this, what value we will get? We will get the value. You should also calculate that whether I am correct or wrong. The value will get as 1356 Pascal. So those who have completed this revision for the net 2020 paper, you would have done this question already. But for the revision purpose, I'm telling here because it is related to the pressure concept. So here this will be the answer. Now we will know some of the more important concept. So let's move on to the next slide. Yes, here comes our atmospheric pressure and the bias ballard's law. So this question was also asked in the examination of UGC net environmental science. So the concept, if you know, 
you would have done well if you don't know also you can learn now we will discuss here so those who know and you have watched the video where i have discussed about the bias balance law you can skip this portion and those who don't know you can watch this clip so let's move on to that clip that is bias balance law so it is telling that in northern hemisphere if a person stands with his back to the wind then the atmospheric pressure is low towards its left and it is high that is the atmospheric pressure is high towards its right hand side and in the southern hemisphere it is reverse that means in southern hemisphere towards its left it will be high and towards its right it will be low that is atmospheric pressure so that is the reverse of this phenomena so what it says in this picture we will know that if the person this person is standing with his back to the wind then what will happen this is his left hand so left hand side will be having the low pressure zone and right hand side will be having the high pressure zone but if it will be standing in the southern hemisphere then what will be happening then the left hand side will be having the high pressure and the right hand side will be having the low pressure region so this is all about the bias ballard's law very frequently asked concept asked in the environmental science entrances but you should know one more thing yes what is that in the equatorial region that is in the equator region of our earth this law will be not applicable why because there there is weak coriolis effect so this coriolis effect which is produced by the earth's rotation it is weak in the equatorial region of our earth so here all this phenomena why they are taking place so in northern hemisphere this is taking place because the wind is traveling counter clockwise or anti clockwise around the low pressure zone and in the southern hemisphere wind is traveling in the clockwise direction in the low pressure zone in southern hemisphere so as we are discussing about the meteorological parameters this portion in the unit 1 is also important that is the scales of atmospheric motion yes very very important questions are coming from this part in the examination so we will know what are this so the meteorologists those who are studying the meteorological parameters they have divided the fluid motion in the atmosphere into five different scales so this is very important what are the scale they are molecular level micro level meso scale synoptic scale and global scale so these are the five different scale for the fluid motion divided by the meteorologists so there are also sub scale within some of the scale so we'll discuss one by one and you should write down these things in your notes and this scale describes the spatial as well as temporal scales of motion so what are these things we will also discuss in the next slide first of all starting from the size range that is in molecular level the molecules the size range is microscopic or smaller than microscopic level and in micro level it will be millimeters to a few kilometers that is the size range of the atmospheric motion coming to the meso scale phenomena it is from 2 to 2000 kilometers 1000 to 5000 kilometer is for the synoptic scale and here the global scale it is about 2500 to 25000 kilometer so what are these things actually so these are actually the examples of the phenomena in the atmosphere for example molecular phenomena will be heat conduction and molecular dispersion that is the microscopic or molecular level and here mac micro level and here micro level example will be wind gusts or rain drops in the atmosphere thunderstorms and fronts this phenomena are under meso scale phenomena cyclones and air masses under the synoptic scale and global scale is el nino phenomena you all will be knowing itcz and spcz so what are this itcz and spcz yes this is the full form for itcz and spcz they are under the global phenomena and also will know the typical duration so what are this heat conduction and molecular dispersion they will stay for microseconds to milliseconds in the atmosphere wind gust and rain drops from 1 seconds to minutes and thunderstorms and fronts this phenomena can last from minutes to hours and cyclones and air masses can last for days and from weeks or more than weeks this phenomena that is global phenomena of el nino itcz and spcz they can last so to make it more simpler i have provided a table here you all should make it and i will also provide it in our telegram group if you haven't joined you can join the link is in the description so starting with the micro scale so it will last from seconds to minute as we have discussed spatial scale so how will be the distance covered the space covered that is from meters to 1 km examples are turbulence small cumulus clouds and then coming to 
द मीजो स्किन द मिड स्किन दैट इज द टाइम विल लास्ट फ्रॉम मिनट्स टू आवर्स टू वन डे मैक्सिमम एंड द स्पेशल स्केल सो हाउ विल बी द एरिया स्प्रेड बाय दिस फेनोमेना दिस मच डिस्टेंस किलोमीटर्स टू हंड्रेड्स ऑफ किलोमीटर इट कैन गो दैट मीन्स थंडर स्टॉम्स सी ब्रिजेस माउंटेन सर्कुलेशन ऑल दिस कैन गो फ्रॉम किलोमीटर्स टू हंड्रेड्स ऑफ किलोमीटर इन द स्पेशल जोन कमिंग टू द सिनोप्टिक स्केल दे कैन लास्ट फ्रॉम डेज टू वीक्स thousands of kilometer can be the special scale of those scale and examples are fronts cyclones and anti cyclones planetary scales they can last from weeks to months global level and the example are planetary waves or el nino so these are some of the examples the questions are asked like where are the cyclones kept in the atmospheric phenomena so that will be under the synoptic scale so this kinds of questions are asked and whatever we have discussed in the video we are very sure they are very very important for you i hope you have written down and i hope you have learned something new from here if you like this don't forget to subscribe the channel hit the notification icon to get all further updates and yes believe in yourself that's the most important power you should develop and keep smiling see you guys in our next video